Hello YouTube. I made a new solar light based on supercapacitors and I found a very nice IKEA pot. And everything is inside. The solar cells, the LED, the supercapacitor, and this stuff should last you about 20 to 50 years. This slide shows you the main advantages of the light, which is just a lifetime and the amount of light it outputs per night. It charges fully in shadow and also in winter. The image shows you roughly what kind of light you can expect. I had some design goals for the, the light of course. The idea is not to output huge amount of lights. I don't think that looks nice in the garden at night. And I wanted to maximize lumen output over time, so not the maximum amount of lumen now, but really have the thing last. I think that's the best economical solution for these kinds of lights. You make them once and you want to use them as long as possible. Uh, I wanted to use the least parts possible, and that's where the solar ICs come in. And of course I wanted to make it economical. This shows you what you need for the light. You need pop, IKEA dropper pop, 3 euros. You need a solar cell, 1 euro 30. You need a supercapacitor, 4 to 5 euros. An optional circuit board, 20 cents in low quantities. An LED. An efficient one is 20 cents to 1 euro, depending on where you buy it. You need the IC, the QX5252, or similar. You need the inductor for one solar cell, one capacitor configuration. You need about 800 micro henries. The IKEA pole is quite nice quality. It's quite thick glass. The lid is stainless steel with a glass plate that is squeezed between the stainless steel surround and this plastic plate here with a flexible rubber there. And this plastic plate is held inside the lid by this white Teflon ring that goes around. You can remove this ring with a knife, and then this thing comes off and the glass plate comes off. So as I said, it's not watertight. What I did is top coat the lid with spray paint. And that seems to work quite well. I've been testing that for a few months now. You could also fill this with polystyrene resin. Um, that will probably also make it watertight. I haven't tried it myself, but from the design, it seems that that should do the trick. Or you just remove this ring here and the glass plate and use caulk between the metal lid and the glass plate to make it waterproof. If you don't do this water will come in. Here you see the inside of one of the lights I made. At this time I did not have the big solar cell here but I used smaller ones. So I used four and I used two ultra capacitors and a 400 micro henry inductor. This gives you about two times more light. You can see that I basically soldered the LED and the inductor directly to the QX5252 IC without using a circuit board. And that I soldered directly onto the supercapacitors and the solar panels. You don't really see it that it's loose in there. So it is a nice design, already like this. Here you see some photos of the lights that I made in the garden. The schematic of the solar circuit is extremely simple and self-explanatory. You see that here. You can use other um, ICs too. I showed them here. QX5252 is most easily obtained. Typical inductor value. LED, solar cell, 2 volts. You can also use 2.5 volts, but you trade off lifetime. 
You can find the super capacitor on eBay or on AliExpress. Of course, you need the IKEA pot. And don't forget the polystyrene resin to make the water waterproof the IKEA pot. The efficiency of the lighting is about 90% thanks to the QX5252 IC. The charging by the configuration that we choose is around 75% on average and the capacitance is, uh, that we use is about 50%. Now the capacitance is a bit low what we can get out but um, we trade it off by gaining more than two times the lifetime and we get much better high temperature operation. So here you can see this, uh, the IC limits the voltage to 0.9 volts on the low side, below that it will shut off, and we lose 11% of the capacitor energy. We use about 54% from 0.9 volts to 2.2 volts, and the 2.2 volts is basically the solar uh, open loop voltage, 2.45 volts minus the solar IC uh, Schottky diode, which takes off about 0.25 volts. Now we lose 34% of energy by not going to the rated voltage, 2.7 volts, for about 10 years lifetime at 30% capacitance loss. Um, by using the cap only at 2.2 volts, we can operate at 40 degrees Celsius or a bit higher without losing too much charge. Um, this is the trade-off between heat resistance and the amount of volts that you can use the capacitor uh, with. Um, also, you'll gain lifetime at equal temperatures, uh, about a factor of two. So really we don't lose by throwing away some capacitance. This graph is the derating graph of the capacitor. You see that lifetime goes up when you use it at lower maximum voltage. And you see that lifetime goes up when you go to lower temperatures. And you can see that by going from 2.7 volts to about 2.2 volts, you gain a bit more than a factor of 2 in lifetime. So we lose 34% of our total energy and we gain more than 34% uh, lifetime. So net, you always gain by going to lower voltages. A little word on the solar ICs. This one here operates at a higher frequency than the Chinese chips like the QX5252 and the YX8018 so it needs a smaller inductor. The whole thing might be uh, slightly more efficient also because of it. These inductors values that you see here are when you're using two Supercapacitors. If you use one, please use higher values. You have a little, little bit of less light running for the same amount of time. The QX5252 datasheet only suggests it can be used by for batteries around 1.5 volts, but you can also use it for ultracapacitors. As you can see on the image on the right, I didn't notice any weird things in the waveform, only that the duty cycle goes up. There's tiny little overshoots, I think that's just normal for these os simple oscillator chips. But nothing out of the ordinary. So you can just use them for ultracapacitors as well at higher voltage. This slide shows you that it is always better for efficiency reasons to use a lead at lower output current. And you can see here that the peak of the output lumens per watt of the LED is around 6 milliamps, 5 to 6 milliamps current. And that is the current that we use in our design here. If you want a nicer circuit, you can of course 3D print the structure that you can put your super cap and solar cells in. Uh, makes the whole look quite nice. Um, you see here's a little table with various LEDs I found and their efficiencies. The best LEDs are now uh, SMD. This is this this one. You, you, they go up to 220 lumens per watt. 
If you want to scale the design, just use more filter capacitor in, in parallel as well as more solar panels in parallel as shown on this slide. The indicated inductances are for a running time of around 15 to 20 hours. Of course you need the IC and the LED as well to create a light. These spots do get hot in summer. 50 degrees Celsius is no exception. That is also the reason why we use the capacitor at 2.2 volts instead of its rated voltage is 2.7 volt and throw away some capacitance. But they also charge in shadow. This light is pretty much in shadow all day and it works pretty much fine every evening. Remember that the solar cells is way oversized with respect to other solar lights that you usually buy in cheap stores. Some people really like these spots. You can also put your electronics inside here. Um, but keep in mind that moisture can be trapped inside these spots and sometimes you have to open them to release it. Of course I gotta show you how it looks at night again. If you put them in transparent pots they shine on the plants quite nicely. I have a version that is one white too here. Yeah, you can see a few more. They're a good deal brighter than the cheap stuff that you can buy in the stores. I think up to 10, 20 euros, you'll certainly be better than this, and they do work in winter. So if you're sick of your lights not working in winter, or not working at all after one or two years, then this is really the stuff that you need. I hope you enjoy this.